Hi, I'm Emerson with Lunar Outpost. Welcome to another episode of How to Make a Space Truck. In this episode, we're going to cover why the moon. Its hazards are hostile to us all. Its conquest deserves the best of all mankind. And its opportunity for peaceful cooperation may never come again. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why, 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. The Cold War, lasting from the 1940s to 1991, was more than just a geopolitical struggle between the United States and Soviet Union. It was a multifaceted competition that extended far beyond the bounds of Earth. The space race was born from ever-increasing technological advancements that saw humans leaving Earth only decades after the radar was invented. In 1957, the Soviets shocked the world when they launched Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite. The Sputnik success created shock and terror in the United States. Be like Bert, when there is a flash, duck and cover and do it fast. In response, the U.S. accelerated our space efforts. The space race became a battleground for technological and ideological supremacy. With its peak coming in 1969 during the Apollo 11 mission, Neil Armstrong's historic landing became a symbol of American triumph and ingenuity. Humans had stepped foot on a new, unexplored planetary body for the first time ever. The space age had hit a crescendo. The Space Race 2.0 is in full swing today. Companies like SpaceX have lowered launch costs significantly in the past decades by creating reusable rockets. The price per kilogram to launch a payload into low Earth orbit was around $16,000 in 2000. Today, with SpaceX's Falcon 9, it's around $2,600. Before reusability, rockets were one-off. They would launch, reach orbit, and were discarded. Now with reusable rockets, startups are able to send their research into orbit at a much more approachable price than ever before. This has led to a boom in private space companies. In fact, venture capital firms invested around $18 billion into the new space economy in 2017 alone. Private companies are creating the infrastructure for human permanence on other planetary bodies. This involves communications, roads, launch and landing pads, and habitats. And Lunar Outpost is providing the mobility to make that infrastructure possible. We need to find a reason to go into space and commercialize if we truly are going to successfully push beyond the bounds of Earth. And one of the first commercial applications of robots in space will be resources. There are two things that space has an infinite amount of. The first is power, and the second is resources. And if we can find a way to access either one of those two things, we can fundamentally change the way that we operate as humanity. One of the first resources we're gonna be able to access is water ice. Now water ice is incredibly important for humans on Earth and on the moon. What's really interesting is water ice's composition, hydrogen and oxygen. That hydrogen and oxygen is not only important for astronauts on the moon, but for refueling in space. Now let's talk about helium-3, a rare isotope on Earth, but plentiful on the moon when combined with fusion energy, becomes the most valuable material on Earth. Helium-3 is used for nuclear fusion, medical imaging, neutron detection, and quantum computing. It is so rare that it's not sold on the public markets. All Helium-3 is controlled by the Department of Energy and commands the impressive price of $28.2 to $38.8 thousand dollars per kilogram. The geopolitics of the moon cannot be overstated. In JFK's speech, he says, its hazards are hostile to us all. Its conquest deserves the best of all mankind. And much of the same still applies today. The next 10 years will dictate who controls the moon's precious resources and who has the keys to the solar system. Who can build these launch and landing pads, who has control of the lunar ice, and who will have the opportunity to truly become multiplanetary. It is no longer just the Soviet Union and the United States. Countries like China, India, and more are vying for the moon. 
We at Lunar Outpost will be traveling to the Shackleton Ridge soon with our mobile autonomous prospecting platform. This will be the first mission out of many that will provide the stepping stones for larger systems like our space truck to establish these bases, begin resource extraction and processing, and finally, establish human presence. To follow along with our missions and our progress on our space truck, make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube and follow on Instagram.